Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, we are going to discuss a suitable method slash principle to the given situation and its advantages and disadvantages. As you can see on your screen, there is a group of people busy doing their own work. There is one suitable method slash principle to the given situation, that is work specialization. So what is work specialization? Work specialization is where we split up the process of work into individual tasks that is necessary for the organization or business, and that cannot be handled by one person. It is actually a division of labor, wherein it is realized that by giving more emphasis on the scope of activities, productivity increases. Okay, we will go through to the advantages of the specialization system. So the first one is define set skill. When we say advantages, it is seen that it can be visualized during the early stage of one's career. Employees can be an expert to some degree in the specific task, which acquire skills through training or through experience. Second one is boost productivity. One of the most important aspects of job specialization is its potential to increase worker productivity and output. So work specialization able to increase worker productivity and output due test refinement by the specialist. The third one is finding a job. Work specialization can also be advantageous to workers which it may improve employment prospect. Workers with specialized skills are often more desirable than those with only general skills. Many jobs even require workers to have specific knowledge and skills and it is an advantage to have such ability. The fourth one is job security. Workers with specialized skills are more valuable toward the company than people with no skills as such. A worker with a specialized skills that other is not as competent as them is difficult for a company to replace. The fifth one, a beta payment. Many companies look forward to specialized employees to take responsibility for large units or projects. When someone is specialized in a certain field, they can apply for better job opportunities because specialized employees are on high demand, and they are also offered higher pay with other incentives and remunerations. Next, we will go through to the disadvantages of specialization system. The first one is mastering one skill set. Mastering one's skill set from a consistent concentration and experience may lead a person to find multitasking job as a difficult task, which could hinder the career growth. This became even more difficult when the job becomes linear throughout the job market. The second one is increased rate of absenteeism. Specialization can possibly cause workers to abstain from their work as the repetitive work might grow dissatisfaction and loses interest among them or prevent them from socialize with others. When the frequency of the absenteeism increases, the output will be decreases. The third one is restriction to apply. If there is a vacancy in another section or department where the job profile would be paid better, this candidate would be restricted from filling the post. People with specialized work tend to lose their chances to apply for a vacancy in another section or department due to many restrictions which will eventually cause them to have limited skill set in the future life. The fourth one is 
company suffers. If the company is performing well due to the expert working in the category, the absence of the employee may affect the company's performance and probably suffers in due course of time. The fifth one is require specialized training. Even though the worker possesses specialized skills, in order to become a permanent employee, the organization needs to offer employees with training, and this can lead to a higher cost. The benefits of voluntary trade are obvious. Suppose this guy has bananas, and this guy has oranges. He needs oranges for marmalade, and this guy needs bananas for banana bread. They swap. They exchange. Each guy is made better off through trade. In our last video, though, we saw that a key fact about the modern world involves more than simple exchange, more than merely moving existing things around. We grew rich by also producing more stuff per person. Say you're cooking hamburgers and fries for your family. It might take an hour for you to prepare the meal because you individually do everything. You start the grill, you cook the burgers, chop the fries, slice the vegetables, on and on and on. But now look at how a burger joint makes hamburgers. Each worker has a specific job in the chain of production that serves burgers and fries to its customers. Each worker is specialized. This specialization, what Adam Smith called the division of labor, makes individual workers more productive. No more lost time switching between tasks. Plus, as a worker concentrates his effort, he gets better at doing the task at hand. But it's not just the specialization of workers that increases output. It's also the development of specialized tools that modern workers use. The burger joint has tools to slice potatoes, to cook burgers, and to fry the fries. That's just specialization 101. I'm sure you've seen one of these around. The container. They're everywhere. Cargo transported by ship used to be stored in barrels, in sacks, in wooden crates, and offloaded by hand. The invention of the container, though, created more than just a metal box to put stuff in. With it came a wave of specialized technology that dramatically increased the productivity of shipping and offloading. Ships themselves evolved, dwarfing their predecessors with the ability to stack containers below and on the deck. Ports changed, too dredging deep waters and providing specialized pilots and gantry cranes to quickly park and unload ships. Driverless yard tractors magically whisk containers away. The containers are put on trucks and trains built specifically to hold them. Workers today are superhuman compared to their brethren of yesteryear. We went from carrying bags on our backs to lifting the equivalent of two school buses with mere flicks of our wrists. To make specialization worthwhile, you need to make a lot of stuff. For example, there's no point specializing in hamburgers if you plan to cook only one burger a week, or buying a forklift or a crane simply to unload weekly groceries from the family car. Trade provides a market big enough to make it worthwhile to invest in specialization. And the bigger the market, the more we specialize, and hence, the more we can produce. As a conclusion, Work specialization is undoubtedly very beneficial for the company. However, the concept of work specialization also have a few negative effects, especially if the implementation of the specialization is not carried out accordingly.